the United States they can. Because at Zoom somehow ended the meeting, I just want to add three points. First of all, I was referring to B Day, I was not referring to the Second World War as a whole. I was referring particularly to that day, which will happen to be the 6th of June of the Gregorian year, 1944. Because that was the day when in Normandy, too many people, too many Allied soldiers were killed by the Germans. Of course, later they were victorious. I trade need to add that some two million Soldiers from the Indian subcontinent in those days, of course, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, all were one single country, India, joined the forces, two million of them, and many of them did not return, could not return home because they fell in the war, they died. And the third point, okay. which is very important, to become a successful leader, we must learn to serve others. This is very clearly seen in the New Testament of the Bible that Jesus Christ washes the feet of his disciples the night before his death. And he shows this. And every good leader should also learn to serve his people. Oliver Cromwell, one of the best leaders the world ever had, used to sign every single letter saying to a most humble servant. Oliver Cromwell, be for protection. But this is the important thing. Every successful leader has been one who learned to serve. And I believe Abraham Lincoln, the late president of the United States of America, was one of them. In our country, Mahatma Gandhi was another of them. Mother Teresa, was another one, and no doubt Nelson Mandela was another one, four of whom I can remember at this very moment and recall by name and mention by name. All of them are great leaders because they learn to serve others. And that we need to do as teachers, as our fellow students, etc., etc., etc. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joseph? Yes. Our dear international leader, sorry, we were cut down in the middle of our call. Can you please talk the finish line? The finish line? Which yeah, one? Yeah, you were, you, you were uh, speaking to off. us. Yeah, 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 I was cut off. So, um, yeah, well, and what he just said, we normally, here in America, we have what we call in leadership and management, we use the unity of effort, unity of effort, so that everyone is moving in the same direction, same sheet of music, dancing to the same tune, the same song, and not going in opposite direction from, from what the mission is all about. So that's what we call the principle of leadership in uh, unity of effort. Same movement, same objective, same direction. The, the holistic approach is normally used at the university where I, where I teach. Holistic approach training is actually free of cost to students in time of stress, such as this. Um, they get it for free online. They can sign up and do it. Don't cost them anything. Uh, also, the students who are online now doing um, online uh, classes, they have to complete, they must complete the COVID-19 training course. Once they complete it, they have to sign that the course has been completed. There's no tests uh, of their cognitive skills or abilities to make sure they grasp uh, the material. They just have to sign that they have done it. They must do it before they can sign up for classes um, uh, online. So those are some of the things uh, we're doing holistically to keep our students um, from embarking into a stressful situation which will take them down into a dark abyss. You want to keep them enlightened and inspired and uh, moving in the right direction. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we please connect Ritu Porna Banerjee? I have some question for you. That is question number six and seven. That is present scenario of uh, 
this crisis how you do you how do you view this present scenario in your country india and how far we are ready to deal with the next step that is upcoming or the present third wave in mind what is the scenario in india rituparna banerji and how your country is ready to face this third wave of pandemic stress Ooh, that is a tough one. <laughs> it, it is very tough question to answer. Yes. Yes. Women is more tough uh, than the situation. Permit, permit me, permit me just to encourage her. Just permit me to encourage her, because I want to disclose a secret. Ritu Kaur's <laughs> late great grandfather from her maternal side, who also happens to be my late grandfather. served during the first world war and that means we have soldier spirit in us and therefore i would ask now i would address her directly as ritu parna please speak out and don't be afraid to speak out that is the spirit of soldiers we must go forward while carrying those who leave who are left behind us on our shoulders so go on ritu parna please speak up yes yes so the second wave across india uh, uh deemed us quite powerless the whole of the country i would not like to get into the political setup and everything else but it is true that the second wave did affect my country and my people more than the first wave did true but i think this was a lesson for all of us yes for the government for the people for those who are executing all the policies and uh, we are somehow mentally and uh, emotionally better prepared to deal with the third wave and uh, the rest only time will tell we can not predict anything and uh, the only way is to pray and uh, stay positive and keep our fingers crossed that the third wave does not impact us the way the second wave did and that we have far better control over it than we did okay okay ritu porna thanks a lot can we hear from neva neha and divyani from india the same question as a student point of view what do you think that uh, how we are managed and how we are really prepared to face this third wave and uh, how, what is your point of view as a student as a future leader how you are ready to face it yes uh we pray that uh, third wave should not come because and we have seen that second wave cause a loss of uh, life in many countries not only india because in yes. the uh, month of may it was a uh, tough for all that uh, every day the cases was 3 lakh more 3 lakh 85000 something it was crossing right. more than 4 lakh so it was ca- causing a loss of death or loss of life in a uh, people many uh, loved ones was uh, uh dying on the street many things was happening so uh, as uh, our government has planned some certain rules and regulations so i i will uh, suggest our uh, citizens to follow that because it is not a silly things that you uh, ignore it it is a very big issue uh, if we right. have followed at the starting is starting when the covid was started if we follow that then this situation is not occurred only but uh, this uh, people uh, take this very lightly due to them due to the uh, wrong of a uh, people this uh, causes a high uh, that but i am really means grateful by hearing the news that all the countries are getting together helping each other supplying oxygen helping in many fund issues so that causes a many relief to the countries which uh, many countries don't have oxygen supply so many other countries are helping them and more okay. is that under 18 uh, vaccine are not issued <laughs> as students uh, our vaccines are not issued uh, above 18 are issued but uh, people are not taking that also they are also uh, means uh, wasted that vaccine also many vaccines was wasted on when they were sealed and all things 
but i request okay. the people please take the vaccines on time because government are making these plans for you only because uh, they don't uh, want to lose the people on the countries because uh, they are not doing for themselves they are doing for the citizens of uh, the countries and the most thing is uh, it under 18 age uh, now also they have now on the second waves it is a high risk for children so my right. uh, request to the children is uh, please stay at home please listen to your guardians your parents your teachers your government which are giving you a day to day means what you should follow and uh, wear mask stay safe at home uh, do same exercise uh, keep your mind cool and calm please uh, be motivated thank you lot of advices from diviani neha what do you like to add add with the uh, our diviani yes neha yes. and we have already deal with the first and second wave of covid 19 so we are prepared for that and we think it will not come as our government has planned some certain rules and regulation of covid 19 as number of covid 19 cases and tested positive rates are shown thank you thank okay you. so ashutosh the little brother from india ashutosh what is your view are we ready and prepared to face the third wave and how your country india is ready to face it we know that the destructive situation in india du during this pandemic situation and how is your present view of the moment as a future leader how you like to rate it and view it ashutosh yes in india we all are means Uh, ready for third wave but it shouldn't come because the children vaccine is not yet come and it's a high risk for children on third wave in first and second wave we heard that uh, many children lost lost their parents so there should not be third wave because it it will be more dangerous than first and second wave so right. we wish that uh, second first and second uh, third wave should not come Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, Shagun Singh from Nepal, who is staying in India. Shagun, what is your point of view regard regarding the first and second that we have dealt already in India? As you know, the destructive situation, the pandemic stress, all we had. Shagun, what is your point of view? How Nepal and India is ready to deal with these physical challenges? the oxygen preparatory and the health situation the health ministry is ready to face the third wave what do you think shagun uh, well ever since the resurgence of covid 19 and as second wave and increase in mortality rate even more than the first one everyone is concerned about the possibility of third wave and it it is being even more devastating and uh, and it is being <clears throat> even more uh, like uh, people are uh, uh, like uh, no uh, people are uh, mm. yeah yeah carry on no problem they are like Chagun. yeah they are like uh, feared uh, and then uh, i what uh, what plan we have made is like uh, vaccination should be done having uh, i would uh, i would uh, suggest my people like uh, the people whom i know to take vaccination and then after follow up with the government uh, rules and regulation what they are telling and then uh, we should be spread uh, spreading awareness about uh, this uh, covid 19 and then we should uh, tell them about symptoms and prevention and cure uh, the people who are uh, living in rural area are not uh, are not uh, like they have no ideas about this uh, and then we should uh, mainly focus on them uh, because uh, third wave uh, maybe it it will be more dangerous than first and second it is said like that and then uh, we should uh, follow up with the government rules and regulation and uh, vaccination should be done okay thank you shagun uh, my question uh, now it is number 8 to our uh, i will come to moloy sir but first of all i would like to listen from joseph international leader and our dearest brother for the question number 8 psychological and emotional physical barrier challenges we have faced a lot of difficulties what is your point of view dearest international leader joseph from america can you please tell us share your point of view the solution and guidance 
psychological, physical, emotional barrier, how we can deal with this? One thing that, thank you, thank you for the question. That's a great question though. One thing that all leaders in the world must come to the realization of is that we now have a mind, body, and soul connection. They're not separate right. like people used to believe. We have to treat all three as one entity, not separate. That's the holistic approach and the psychological approach to treat individual, to make sure they are holistically treated in all ways and that they resume 100% cognitive functionality uh, to cope with uh, whatever situation you're facing. We have found that uh, we are in a, in a state of the world in this emerging era of a scientific and technological um, era or highway, we must right. deal with constant changes as they come along. We cannot accept any tunnel vision approach from any leader where they are dissecting things and dealing with uh, uh, just a section of it and not the whole. Doesn't work like that, especially in this right. era of technology. Every day to us, especially in America, is a new experience. And once those experiences are documented and proven, we automatically incorporate it into our functionality uh, for improvement. Um, I found that I was teaching at one campus and uh, one day they closed down the campus and they moved us to a new campus. Well, okay. <laughs> there's a problem. The classrooms were different, okay? Each desk at that new campus classroom had a built-in computer inside the desk. Um, so students don't have to use laptops anymore or anything of that nature. Uh, it took time for the students to learn the new process of that operation. The powers to be at the university decided that was the best approach and uh, without even consulting the students. However, fortunately, it all worked out okay in the end. And they figured that that was a time uh, saving method. Um, we must give each student in, um, in a teaching environment, a class uh, syllabus. This has been one of my main pet peeves. You have to give the student in class, any class, a class syllabus for the entire semester. The class syllabus must cover the chapter of the text to be covered in class, uh, quizzes to be given, the dates to be given, how long it's gonna be, and the examination dates and how long the examination is gonna be. The teacher should discuss each page of the syllabus with the student and get the student's signature that the student understood the syllabus and what the content of the class will be. That reduces stress and anxiety on mm -hmm. each student in the class because now they know, can't say they didn't know. One of the things that's been uh, one of my foremost activity is I'm always curious as to why a student miss a class. Usually the faculty or the university gives a uh, three excuse absence to a student before the faculty initiated a student drop. You must get three excuse absence from the faculty if you did not and you miss three classes, they'll automatically drop you from the class. Um, student, what my, my thing is, teachers should not just arbitrarily drop uh, a student from the class without prior knowledge as to why the student has missed the class. One of the things I've found here is that when you do that, that leads to um, the student filing an appeal and it turns out to be bad news for the school and for the faculty regarding insensitivity and possibly discrimination claim against this teacher for lack of effective and the department and university for lack of effective and efficient supervision of the faculty member. One of the things I found 
But several of our students, when I speak to them, why weren't you in class last week? I'm finding out they are going with their parents to fill out job applications so the parent could get a job and make some cash. A lot of these students are from uh, non-English speaking country. So the parents don't know how to read a job application, fill it out, but we find the student goes with the parent and complete the job application. Um, the parent then wants to get the job. My thing to the employers is that not because the applicant does not speak English, doesn't mean you should not hire the person. A lot of individuals have transferring skills from their country where they have worked will supersede the skills of individuals who are currently working. And so then you should hire that person, put the person in the workforce and have the person to continue to improve and to better the organization for everyone. Thank you. Okay, uh, I have a question, Joseph, our yes. international leader and brother. Uh, are you happy with the American initiatives and preparation that was taken by the government, the leaders? Are you happy with the preparation side of America or you think that there should be more of something? Regarding COVID-19. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, the COVID-19 view, the preparation, I the first that... wave, second wave and third wave is coming. So what is your view that uh, is America really ready and was prepared enough to face this? Well, one of the things um, I can tell you about America is that we do not anticipate a second or a third or fourth wave. We have effectively dealt with the first wave and we have documented um, technical and logical approaches to that we have turned into standard operation procedures to handle anything else coming in the future. One of the things I do not like about the operation in America is that individuals who are in the uh, suburban or uh, rural areas are not getting the appropriate treatment they're supposed to get. There has been a big focus in the urban areas where there are masses of people because those individuals can be easily vaccinated than individuals in a, in a shorter period of time more rapidly than individuals in, uh, in urban uh, areas. Uh, that's one of the, the problems that we have to deal with and resolve here. The next problem is individuals who may have a religious preference to the vaccine, their belief is in God, that God will cure the, the vaccine. And so they don't need the, the injections. We have now um, individuals who are speaking with those people and are presenting the facts to them that medical care will heal their problems and it has done. The other ailments and illnesses they have had over the years, the, the, the next issue regards individuals without transportation. We have to get to them. So America must meet these people where they are. You can't wait for them to come. You have to go out and find them and vaccinate them. When it comes to the census, we go everywhere. We don't wait for people to come to us when we do the census. We go and find them. So they need to utilize the same concept, same principles, same method of operation to go and find these people wherever they are and get them vaccinated so they can prolong their life also. Those are three things that I have an objection to. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hayat from Tunisia has joined and uh, Joseph of America. Please meet our sister, Ms. Uh, Hayat from Tunisia. She is your big fan. And she was waiting maybe for her entire life to meet you. Oh, Hayat. Thank you. <laughs> Hayat, how are you today? Hi. Hi dear. hi, dear sister Munira. Hi, uh, Mr. Dr. Professor and uh, great 
writer, Dr. Joseph Spencer, uh, Dr. Malai, Dr. Rupana, all, all of you, I'm uh, really I happy, very, very happy to, to meet you yeah. and to join okay. you today. Uh, excuse me, I'm uh, a little bit uh, late since I have many, uh, I have had uh, some, uh, some things to do, some actions, and uh, now I'm with you. Uh, really. uh, no problem. Hayat, I have a question. Uh, we have heard from uh, people of India, we have heard from America, we have heard of uh, Nepal. Now I want to know about the situation in Tunisia, that how your government, how your health ministry is ready to face the pandemic next step, that is third wave. And how you, are you happy with the everything, the preparation was taken by the government and everybody? Uh, how about the situation, educational situation, your, your students, as you are a teacher, you are a poet and international personality. How do you view that? What should be the preparation side? We can take more actions to prevent this pandemic stress. Hayat, can you tell us about the situation in Tunisia? Uh, the situation is... Uh... I think it's it's um, solvable. They are they are making uh, what 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 we can for, to uh, to solve problems. Um, ministry of uh, of uh, welfare of health health ministry is doing a vaccination. And okay. we are uh, we are uh, starting with uh, especially with the doctors and uh, all uh, the staff, medical staff, and then uh, uh, now they are uh, vaccinating uh, the education uh, staff, uh, teachers, and uh, and we are we are uh, taking measures, um, distanciation uh, in classrooms. Um, making uh, people aware of that uh, pandemic, trying to uh, to to solve uh, to solve uh, every difficult situation. It's not really easy, uh, since uh, it's uh, in, in relation with the vac uh, vaccines from uh, from abroad, etc. So, uh, um, I think. Uh, uh, there's too many too many things to do, but we are okay. trying. Everyone okay. is trying to do that, and uh, okay. they the uh, in literature um, writers and poets are writing uh, so many uh, books. I know um, mm -hmm. a writer that uh, uh, who uh, who writes um, a book he, uh, is um, how Mr. Covid uh, how Mrs. Covid speaks in uh, all language. Uh, uh, it's a great, uh, great uh, book uh, where, uh, we, where, where the writer speaks about uh, this, pandem uh, this pandemic situation. And uh, he, uh, he gives her uh, the name of Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Okay. COVID. Wait. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, yeah. We are trying Carry to on. do our best. Okay, thanks. Thanks, dearest sister, uh, educator, and poet, Ms. Hayat from Tunisia. And uh, I, I, we will go for a poetry session also after, uh, after some time, just uh, maybe after 10 minutes, we will have a break. And after that, we will connect again. But uh, right now, I want to know what is the solution point of view, the preparation point of view. And uh, I want to know from our and international leader Joseph of America, I have a question that what is your international mm -hmm. message to our students, our, our teachers, how they can be more proactive, motivated? Joseph. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, one of the things that we all should realize is that 
each country is different um, in terms of culture, perception, abilities, getting things done, leadership, um, technology uh, processing, and um, one must be ready to grasp and implement those um, technological changes and the information highway, the World Wide Web, scientific highway. We now have computers and cell phones where we can ask the question and uh, receive an answer, or we can go to our keyboard and with our fingertips moving, we can unravel uh, the mysteries of the world in a few seconds. So we must be prepared to use that knowledge in the best way possible for our constituencies, our students, and everyone, so they may realize and grasp uh, what's going on to level the playing field so everyone can participate uh, in the same process and achieve uh, what's there to, to be achieved. One of the things um, I've stressed to my uh, university faculty colleagues is that we should uh, be take a professional position in this, in assisting others, provide an assistance to them uh, so they become familiar and we should develop a standard operating procedure and pass those procedures out to individuals so they understand what's going on. Everyone knows the right process on the same sheet of music. We cannot afford to have uh, individuals in our industry, corporations, or school to flunk or to fail out um, because of improper leadership and guidance. That's a reflection on the leadership of the country and poor performance in terms of quality approach to get individual on the right track. Um, one of the issues from that, result from that, is the legal theory of malfeasance and negligence by not providing the proper help. Uh, if we know it and we don't do it and it result in injury or something of that nature, it will result in a legal action resulting from malfeasance and negligence. You know what you're supposed to do and you didn't do it because you did not care. And so I wish um, each individual in each country around the world to develop physically, mentally, psychologically, and holistically um, uh, when they go from place to place where they train individuals. If they can do it free of cost, they should. Uh, money should not be our ultimate goal and perception. Some people give up their health for wealth. And that's the wrong approach. Uh, we should teach health over wealth. If you don't have health, you're not gonna make any wealth. Um, and so if you can afford to do it, you do it. Uh, there are available resources for everyone to achieve what they want free of cost. You don't have to sit around and wait for a package to fall into your lap. It does not work that way. Individuals must take the initiative and be in a foremost position to develop what they can and do what they can uh, to make things work. Teachers though, and leaders must be open to their students and constituents and not be guarded uh, from them. They must give them the credit that's due. Don't feel slighted because a student in your class has some more knowledge than you do in a particular area. So you try to bash the student, don't give the student the right um, uh, credentials. Same thing with leaders. Leaders should be happy that individuals around them are knowledgeable uh, more so than they are. And they should keep those individuals around them to provide them with the proper guidance. They should motivate those individuals to produce and uh, we have individuals with functional expertise. Not all leaders have knowledge in every area. Not all teachers, our professor, have knowledge in every area. And so when we find a functional expert 
in our midst, we should motivate that individual, uh, encourage that individual, uh, give that individual the credentials they're seeking so they can go ahead and be uh, a light uh, that shine in our workforce and, and in our society. Don't go with individual's thoughts when they say that. You can't do that. Now, don't believe it. I'll give you a good right. example. I was applying, I want to get into a college, the most prominent college here in Milwaukee and individuals say, well, that's a tough college to get into. I've been trying for years and I can't get in there. So one day I just happened to walk in the university and I walked right into the business department and um, the door was open. I knocked on the door, the fella was on the phone. He said, one minute. I stood there and waited. He said, come in, have a seat. He said, how oh, can I help you? I said, oh, great. I would like to teach here. He said, really? He said, what's your degree? I said, well, I, I have, my degrees are in business management. I said, really? I, I said, yeah, this is business department. Am I in the right place? He said, yes. We talked for around an hour. And he said, I want you to come back tomorrow at one o'clock, bring your resume with you, and we'll um, find you a position. I have several. So when individuals tell you you can't do that, don't believe it. We all have different tracks to walk on. We all have different hindsight. We all have different foresight. We all have different insight. We all have different beliefs and personalities. And we must use those to the best of our ability. So don't let anyone tell you, you can't do that. You um, right. believe in yourself and get it done. Thank you. Great, great, bravo. Bravo, a huge round of applause for our dearest international leader. Can you please put your hands together for expressing our joy and brave, bravery speech, international leader, Joseph. I am very much thankful to you. So right at the, uh, Hayat is very happy. I can see that. She is overjoyed and overwhelmed to hear uh, my dearest brother, Joseph. Okay, Haya, thank you. And listen, I will connect our dearest international students and also ladies. As you can see, only ladies are there ruling, ruling this international conference today. So I am taking just a short break for five minutes to have one cup of coffee, just please. Because after five minutes, we'll be back. And Joseph, I want to hear your poetry. Uh, Hayat, I want to hear your poetry. Oh, <laughs> and Ritu Parna, Neha, Diviani, Shagun, be ready with your poetry, please. The session is will be for dedication in terms of literary art and literary work. Hayat, Joseph, Shagun, Neha, Diviani, Ritu Parna, I want to hear your poetry for the next session. Okay, I'm taking a short break. Thank you, Joseph. We yes. love you all. <laughs> Thank you, love you too. Namaste. <laughs> Hayat, you can you can express you can express your love and respect. Bye bye. We'll be connecting soon. <laughs> <laughs>